Sarah, do you want to take us into spending um, uh, issues? Yes, thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is a question uh, for Paul. And Paul, uh, we spoke last Friday, actually, about the UK aerospace future. So I think I know your approach to this. Um, but in a recent, a very recent article, uh, ADS was reported as saying defence and space industry is well placed to be a catalyst for economic recovery and sustaining important R&D capabilities. So what are these R&D capabilities? So um, there are a range of, there are probably better people to, to, to describe Specifics, but, but from a, a general perspective, what, what we like to see and would want to see is higher investment in R&D, creating more capability that could be drawn into kind of MOD projects and programs, which in turn can be exported to allies around the world. Um, the, the MOD currently spends around 1.2% of its budget on R&D. Um, in the UK economy at large, we spend 1.7%. And there's a target uh, for the economy wide of about 2.4%. Um, so we would see that there is a very significant opportunity for the MOD itself to increase its investment into R&D and particularly perhaps collaborative R&D in order to create um, those future capabilities. Part of the challenge that we face is that um, if we are not creating new capability, then we only go and, and find it elsewhere. So that there, there is a piece about trying to understand both what we are currently good at, which we should be investing more in to ensure that we are sustaining that lead, but we should also be and ask ourselves the question as to what are going to be the important areas in the future, and how do we strategically want to address them? Do we, you know? in a number of, of sectors, so I work quite closely in, in the aerospace sector, as you rightly said, and previously in the automotive sector, you know, it, it's possible to look at the world and say, there are things which, you know, other countries will always have a lead on. So, you know, maybe, maybe we are best to be their best customer. But there are other, other technologies and areas of, of capability where we have an opportunity to be as good, if not better, than everybody else, and we can make some strategic investments to do that. Part of the challenge, and it was alluded to earlier on, uh, earlier is um, the MOD does some great work, DSTL, uh, the Defence and Security Accelerator, but, it, but they, they, they do tend to be apart from industry. There isn't a regular um, a sharing and a collaboration with industry to understand where we are all investing our monies. You know, industry itself is a significant investor in, in R&D. And working a little bit more closely together, we can ensure that the right amounts uh, or uh, a level of investment can be created, which is more impactful, but also ensure that we've got a, a sort of pipeline to develop those initial capabilities so that uh, they, they can reach a, a level of maturity. One of the challenges, you know, rightly, that the MOD and other customers um, you know, are cautious around, they don't want things which are very early stage R&D, so we would call a technology readiness level. So when things are at stage two and three, these are quite early stage, you know, uh, from, a, from a customer point of view, you would prefer them to be six and seven on a, on a scale of one to ten. But, but what that means is there's sometimes a gap between early stage development and something that could be incorporated into a product or service now unless we find a way of pulling through those early stage developments and that can be on collaborative programs uh, you know we will always be behind some of our competitors so can i elicit your opinion just a little bit further so we've got to be realistic about the economic consequences of covid so what would be your priorities for defense r d spending I mean, there are, again, I would say the areas that we know we're strong at. So there's a range of things which are air and uh, future combat air related. There are things around space, combat space that are related that we, we can definitely be uh, spending uh, or, or researching and developing more. But then I think there are some fundamentals around uh, both materials and indeed communications, which are, you know, we, we would want to be pursuing because they're part and parcel of the way in which we will be operating in the future. I'm very happy if it would be helpful to provide um, perhaps a, a little bit more detail from an industry perspective on what some of the key priorities might be. That would be lovely, thank you. Thank you, Chair.